Sup nerds, today we're going to be going over my interesting Royal Knights deck. Starting off with Ertama, we are of course playing Ford King Drazel. Uh, that's how you play this deck. Uh, there are no other options for uh, Tamas. That's this is it. He has a couple of effects here. Uh, breeding your turn, all your Digimon can't Digivolve. And then breeding your turn once per turn. When a Royal Knight trait Digimon card would be played, you may reduce the play cost by four and then further reduce it by one for each source uh, in this Digimon's Evolution cards. And then breeding, start of your main phase, reveal the top card of your Digi-Egg stack, uh, tuck it underneath, and then all of your Royal Knight trade Digimon also get tucked underneath as Digivolution cards. And then the Inheritable, which obviously only happens whenever you absorb another one under your... Uh in your Thomas stack is breeding your turn once per turn when an option card with Royal Knight trait is placed in the battle area, gain one memory. But that is it. Obviously, we're just running four of those bad boys. And then on to uh, the win button of the deck. We are, of course, playing four Omnimons. Uh, you want to see this card. This is how you kill people. Uh, this is the OTK uh, win button whenever you see it. Uh, so the effect is on play slash win digivolving, uh, you can delete one of your opponent's Digimon, uh, or you can play Digimon with the Royal Knight traits and different names uh, from the Digivolution cards of a Digimon breeding area. And if you do trash the Digimon in your breeding area and everything gains rush for the turn. So that rush effect actually includes things you play before him and things you play after him. It's because it's a, just a blanket effect on your entire field. So it just gives everything on your field rush for the turn. Uh, so some people aren't aware of that. They think just the Digimon you play from his effect gain rush. And then on to, I guess, our starter cards is what I would call them. Uh, so we're playing four Magnemon from BT13. Uh, the best card to open with because when you start your turn, you hatch and then you absorb your top Tama. Uh, with your Drazel, and that automatically reduces everything by five on the very first turn. So this guy is a two drop on turn zero, which is really nice. Uh, so he has blocker, which is cool. Uh, can come up, but his all turns effect is when he would leave the battle area, you draw one. Uh, then you can play a Vmon from your hand or Digivolution cards uh, without paying the cost. Uh, but we don't play any Vmon spoilers, so like he just uh, draws a card um, either when he dies or whatever. Like this doesn't matter how he leaves the field. So when King Drazel absorbs him, you actually draw a card off that interaction, which is pretty cool. And then on to our other starter card. Uh, we are playing four Dynaspawn. If you're not going to open with Magna, this is probably your second uh, ideal opening card. So that's why we're playing four of this as well. Uh, the effect is on play. A real top four cards of your deck. Add two cards with loose mon on their names or the Royal Knight trait among them uh, to your hand and trash the rest. Uh, so that includes option cards, uh, just for people that are unaware. So you can add anything with the Royal Knight trait. It can be an option if we ever get a tamer that has Royal Knight traits, uh, you'd be able to add that. Uh, and then the other effect is your turn when you play another Digimon with Lucimon in its name or Royal Knight trait, delete all of your opponent's level four lower Digimon. So you can just field wipe somebody that just swarmed aboard a bunch of small bodies. Uh, that does come up when you're trying to pop Psychmons because uh, you can like double purge out these guys um, and pop a board full of Psychmons or whatever. And then on to uh, the mid range cards. These are just like field control cards. Uh, so we're playing two Jessmon from BT13. Um, his effect is on play, choose any number of your opponent's Digimon whose total DP adds up to 6,000 or less and delete them. And then for each other Digimon you have in play, you add 2,000 DP to this effect. And then the all turns effect is for each of your other Digimon with the Royal Knight traits in play, all of your Digimon get plus 1,000 DP. So if you ever Omnimon out your dudes and you have him and like a whole bunch of other dudes, they're all like huge because everything's a mega basically besides Magnemon. Uh, and then on to another board control card. We're playing two All Force. Uh, All Force is on play is uh, for each of your Digimon with the Royal Knight traits and each of your Blue Tamers. Spoilers not playing Blue Tamers. Uh, trash the top two Digivolution cards of one of your opponent's Digimon. And then your turn once per turn when you play a Digimon with the Royal Knight traits or a Blue Tamer, return one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards to the owner's hand. He actually sees himself being played. So if you can play him with other stuff out, you can trash like four to six sources. Or if you're Omnimoning everything out, you can trash like 10 sources. And then he can just bounce something that had a bunch of sources to begin with. Uh, which is pretty cool for like Greymon.dex and stuff like that. They just have like a stack that says they're like invulnerable to everything. You can just trash all their sources and bounce it to hand, which is pretty nice. And then two Gallantmon. I suppose this is the only Gallantmon I'm playing. A lot of lists I see are playing like anywhere from like three to seven Gallantmons. A uh, combo of this one and the BT12 Gallantmon. I don't really like that. I don't like playing that many of one specific name. 
because uh, your goal is to get different names in your stack and kill people with your Omnimon, so I don't really like that. And I don't think it's valuable enough to play that Gallantmon. I know a lot of people are playing that because of the Belfimon matchup, but we have other things for Belfimon uh, whenever we get into him. Uh, so he has a, a special effect. When you would play this card from your hand, if you have no Digimon in play, reduce the cost by two for every five cards in each player's trash total. Mid to late game, you can actually just play him for free, especially if you're playing against a mill deck, like you can probably play him for free pretty quickly. And you can actually come Combine that effect with King Drazel's effect, uh, as long as you don't have another Digimon in play, obviously. And he also has Rush. And then his on play, uh, when Digivolving, when attacking, not once per turn, which is really nice. Uh, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 DP or less. If nothing was deleted by that effect, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 13,000 DP or more. Uh, so because it isn't once per turn and it's when on play and when attacking and he has Rush, you can pop two things if you play him without passing turn, which is really sick. The only reason I'm not playing three or four of him is just because there's just not enough room. And and I want to have different names. On to our next Royal Knights. We're playing two Kentorosmon. Uh, his effect is on play. If, if you have six or fewer total cards in both player security, uh, you gain three memory and then you reveal a card in your hand. And if it's yellow, you put it on top of your security stack face down. Uh, pretty cool. We have several yellow cards that we would not mind doing that with. And then also he has a win attacking once per turn. Uh, you can trash the top card of your your stack to minus 7,000 DP on something and unsuspend him. So it's kind of like a BT4 War Grandmon, except for you trash the card instead of adding it back to your hand. Um, he's another out to Psychmon slash Solarmon. You can just purge him out and then swing and then uh, minus DP. But also he's really cool because if you get down to these uh, six or fewer security cards, when you Omnimon out him uh, from your stack, you get to gain three memory back. So he effectively saves you three memory on the Omnimon play. Um, so you're less likely to pass turn. And then on to Alphamon. His effect is on play uh, by placing one Digimon card with X Antibody or the Royal Knight trait from your trash in this Digimon's Digivolution cards. All of your opponent's Digimon with play cost 10 or higher cannot attack until the end of their turn. And then his all turns effect is once per turn when an effect will remove this Digimon from the battle area, you can return one card with X Antibody or Royal Knight traits uh, from his Digivolution cards to the bottom of your deck to prevent that from happening. Uh, it includes King Drazel's effect. So if for some reason you wanted him to stick on the field for another turn, you could use his own effect to keep him from being absorbed from King Drazel, which can come up. And then on to our Craniumons. We are playing two BT3 Craniumons. Um, he has Blocker inherently. And then his all turns effect is your Digimon with Blocker can't be deleted by your opponent's effects. Uh, this is really, really good. Uh, once we get into our Leopardmon, um, this will make a little more sense. A lot of people play the BT13 Craniumon, which he himself uh, on play play is unaffected by your opponent's Digimon effects and he can also he's also a pseudo out to Psychmon because he can force them to attack with their Psychmon um, at the end of their turn. I don't think that's worth playing him over this guy who can potentially blanket protect your entire board. And then on to two Gankumons. Uh, he also has blocker and then he has an on play. Without paying the cost you may play a Digimon card with Sistermon and same from your trash or one Digimon card with a Royal Knight traits from the Digivolution cards of your Digimon the Breeding area uh you can't play omnimon or gankumon so you can't like wombo combo out like a bunch of dudes by gankoing into gankoing into omni or something stupid like that uh this guy's really cool because he basically toolboxes all of your dudes that you've already played and have already been absorbed by your drazel and then another toolbox card we are playing two lord nightmons uh his on play is you may return one card with lucimon in the name or rolling knight trait from the trash to your hand so that is not digimon specific so, like you can recycle purge you can re recycle second Mappa. Um, so he just lets you toolbox your trash, which is pretty cool. And then his other effect is opponent's turn once per turn when an opponent's Digimon attacks, gain one memory for each your Digimon with a Royal Knight trait. Um, so that includes himself. So if you like swarm with Omnimon and he's one of the dudes you play out, uh, they swing once and they they you gain like 10 memory, which is pretty cool. And then on to Leopardmon. I think he's one of the best ones. Uh, so he has a wind Digivolving slash main effect. It's once per turn, you may play one green or Royal Knight trait Digimon card from your your hand for the play cost uh, when you play something by that effect reduce the play cost by four and then his all turns effect is when you play another digimon doesn't matter if it's royal knight or not uh, all of your green digimon and royal knight trade digimon gain blocker until the end of your opponent's turn the reason why he's so important is one he combos really well with craniumon if you ever get him and craniumon out it basically just blankets your field with protection from deletion effects which is pretty cool because everything becomes a blocker but the reason why i'm playing three of him 
is because you can purge him out and then use his effect to play Omnimon from your hand by reducing it by four. And you can combo that effect with King Drazel to further reduce it. So your opponent may think that they didn't give you enough memory to play Omnimon without passing turn and just purge this guy out and say, LOL, you're wrong. And then we are playing the Jessmon GX engine. So we're playing two Jessmon GX from BT10. He digivolves for five on any level six with a Royal Knight trait. So he can digivolve on top of all of your level sixes. Obviously you can't do that with King Drazel still in the field, but after you Omnimon, you can digivolve into him potentially. That's not the reason we're playing him. Uh, the reason we're playing him is he effectively lets you toolbox your entire deck. His wind digivolving effect is you may place one card with Royal Knight in its trait and a play cost of 13 or less from your hand or trash under this Digimon as a bottom Digivolution card, and then activate one of that card's wind Digivolving effects, then Blitz, and then his all turns effect is when he has a card with Royal Knight in his traits in his sources, he gains Piercing, Blocker, and Security Attack plus one for each card. Uh, but the primary thing is he gets to activate all of your Royal Knight's effects, like without having to play them, which is really cool. And to combo with him, we are playing two second Mappa from BT10 as well. But the effect is main, unsuspend one of your Digimon. Then if that Digimon is just Mon GX, like this guy, uh, activate one of its wind digivolving effects, and then the security is added to your hand. So even if it's in security, you'll get it to your hand, which is pretty cool. Uh, so it activates his wind digivolving effect, and that will let you tuck a Royal Knight from your hand or trash and then activate their wind digivolving effects. So like you can purge this guy out and then activate this and toolbox any Royal Knight that you have in hand or trash that's 13 cost or lower. And then on to some more options, we're playing four Royal Knights of the Purge. It's a six cost option. So the effect is main, draw one. Then you may place one Digimon card from your hand as the bottom Digivolution card of your King Drazel in your breeding area. Then place this in your battle area. So this would trigger the memory gain since this would go in your battle area. The main delay effect is you can play a Royal Knight trait card from the Digivolution cards of a Digimon in your breeding area. It's on play does not trigger, but it does gain rush for the turn. Um, so that lets you trigger Gallant Mons when attacking and Kentaurus Mons when attacking. This is arguably the best card in the deck. This is a card you want to see early and often. And this is one of the reasons why I'm running two Lord Nightmons is because if you see this in Lord Nightmon, you can play the same purge twice. If you activate this, tuck a Digimon, the next turn you purge this out, purge out that Digimon, then play Lord Nightmon, grab this back, and then you can play purge again. On to the rest of our options as well as most of the spice in this list. We're playing three Holy Flame from starter deck three. Uh, two cost yellow option, Main, one of your opponent's Digimon gains security attack minus three until the end of your opponent's next turn. And then the security is all of your opponent's Digimon gains security attack minus one for the turn. This is really good against Belfimon because it guarantees our Belfimon cannot kill you and can't even check security. So this card continues to try to affect Belfimon's sleep mode. So once the immunity wears off, it immediately takes effect. So they do not get the extra security checks on their turn. So you can do that whenever you want. Uh, you can play Kentorosmon. Reveal this card as a yellow card, and then recover it, and then if your opponent checks that, usually the rest of their boards aren't going to be able to touch you, uh, which is really cool. It can keep you from just randomly dying. And then we are playing two blue cards. Uh, this is a white option. Obviously, I've explained why we can play white options in this deck. And the effect is main. Reveal the top five cards of your deck. You may digivolve one of your Digimon into a non-white Digimon among them without paying its memory cost. If you don't, add one Digimon card among them to your hand, place your rest of them in the bottom of your deck in any order. And the security effect is actually play a Tamer from your hand without paying its memory cost. We'll get into that. We are playing Tamers. Um, so this is, if this is checking security, lets you play one of your tamers for free which is pretty sick but so obviously we can't digivolve with king Drazel on the field but this lets us search the top five cards of our deck for any digimon so this lets us just see a bunch of cards which is this deck's biggest weakness besides solarmon and psychmon is not seeing the pieces you need to see when you need to see them um but yeah this is a very very good card and i love seeing it also fun fact after you king Drazel or after you omnimon out your stack if you activate this and reveal a Jessmon GX, you can active, you can Evo into Jessmon GX for the three memory you paid for this card, because Jessmon GX is not white; he is black and red. Uh, just wanted to add that on there. And then our anti Psychmon Solarmon package, uh, besides our Rolling Knight toolbox, uh, we are playing four Marcus Aemon from BT13. Uh, this is the preferred memory setter for this deck for that reason. You pay five, play him and then you suspend him minus 3k on something. Uh, so that pops all of those guys because they're 3k exactly. Uh, if you check this in security, it lets you play one of these for free, uh, which is pretty pretty cool if they're like in your hand. Also, Kentaurus Mon lets you put this on top of your security stack. Very nice, very cool Kentaurus Mon, thank you. And um, if he's checking security, you can activate his own play, obviously. Um, so he sets you to three and then also outs uh, the biggest issue for this deck. And the full package I'm playing with this card 
is I am also playing two Agumon from BT13. And the reason for that is um, most of your outs to Psychmon Solarmon will pass turn, unless your opponent just gave you a bunch of memory. Um, there are certain situations where it wouldn't, like purging out a Gallantmon or a Kintorusmon, but that's not going to happen very often, especially if your opponent's smart enough to play around stuff like that. Uh, but this guy does not pass turn, and unless you reveal this off a of search or mill it off of something or get, it gets checked in security, your opponent's not going to see this card coming, and they're not going to be able to play around this card. Marcus obviously sets you to three. Your opponent has a Psychmon out. Boo. Okay. You play Agumon for three, go to zero, have this Marcus be treated as Digimon, swing minus 3k on the psychmon pop him and then gain a memory you get a free check out of that uh, so you go back to one they don't have a psychmon anymore and you pop bottles with your omnimon play everything out and this guy also gains rush even though you played him earlier in the turn because of omnimon's effect as i said before but this is a very very fun tech i highly recommend trying this but let me know your thoughts on this list or any questions you have that it maybe i didn't address in the comments down below but i appreciate you guys stopping by don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested in this kind of content want to come back for more but until next time see ya